Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at EasyOS, a script to install Arch Linux by Easenix, right after this. So I'm just going to jump in here and I'm going to go grab my browser and I'm going to go over here and what I'm going to do, I've already got an arch that I have installed already, but that isn't going to help you much, is it? So let's start again from, from the, from the get go and we'll call this uh, arch three and let's see, uh, I, it's my, my ISO is over here on the NAS. It's right there. That all looks good. That all looks good. And we'll want to make this 60 gig. Does Arch need all that? No. It, but the script is set up to allow me to have as much as much disk as I probably would need in order to do some actual work with, with Arch, which is what I'd like to do. Uh, that's probably not going to be enough memory because I'm going to put a GUI on today. And the network is fine. And then it's just asking me to confirm and then we're waiting for it to create it. It's done. So, uh, we'll go ahead and start it up. And we'll open the console. So I need to do a little bit of work here. Let me see. I Let's see if it held. No, it didn't. So let me uh, let me go over here and we'll do scaling local. There we go. Hopefully that'll make it large enough where you can see kind of what's going on. Let me make it as big as I can because this is going to be a text. I'll look at the at the uh, console text. I kind of want that as large as we can get away with. And then I'll, I'll get rid of this white screen here so it doesn't blind you. And then I'll register my mouse and we'll go ahead and start booting into Arch Linux. Let me pull that just a little ways away. I think that can go away. Well, I guess it's all right. It's not going to interfere. All right, so there we are. Um, it's not resizing it much at this point, is it? But maybe that's big enough where you can see what's going on. So at the moment, I'm basically sitting in the ISO uh, live mode of Arch. So the first thing I want to do is I want to pull down uh, uh, the Easy OS script. And to do that, I do a wget uh, https sourceforge.net <clears throat> projects Easy OS files temp Easy Arch is the name of the script, and he has two versions. One is .bios and one is UEFI. So Arch, uh, Easy Arch .uefi if you want to do UEFI boot, and I'm just going to do a legacy BIOS boot. So uh, looks like it worked, and I have I have downloaded it. Let's just take a look at it. So it is a uh, it is a Bash script. You can tell right there, it tells you at the top of the screen. So, um, as you can see, he has this laid out pretty well. He has he has a, a little welcome screen. It has all these functions that he has uh, created. So, uh, I can create my user, there's password, swap sizes, and so on and so forth. So, it's pretty well organized uh, about and, and helping and kind of step you through the process of creating an, an Arch bootable uh, distribution. So uh, let's do a couple of things here. Uh, I can do a, uh, a, a shell, a bash on it if I wanted to, but I always like to do this. The, well, let's just do that. That's fine. 
And I was thinking maybe I would keep this around, but it goes away. So, um, yeah. Bash. Okay, there we go. And the way he has this laid out is is kind of step by step. So you start with step one, and you can optionally install the pieces that you want. Now, of course, these front parts, you're, you're yeah, you don't really have much choice. You need to have a user. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll create a password. Now <clears throat> these echo back to the screen. So I'm I'm not going to use a super secret password. I, I'll use one that everybody already knows. <laughs> and it's the almost the first one. I think it's either the first or the second one in in the uh, cracking list. So let's see. We'll do this, and then we'll call this ArchBM one. So I've got my username. I've got my user password, my root password, and my host name set up, so I can return step one is done. The next thing we want to do is to optimize and configure the mirrorless. So I think he's going to actually bring down. A package, yeah, he's bringing down Reflector, which uh, which trims, I think, some of the older packages and keeps them kind of current. So, okay, so we've got our mirrorless all all situated. So the next thing we'll want to do is uh, we'll want to actually set up a device to boot to. He's got two options here, one for SATA disk and one for NVMe. I have a SATA, obviously. And, well, actually, it's SCSI, but as far as Linux is concerned, it doesn't know that the device driver is SCSI, but that's all right. Uh, and, and this is nice. This is a, He does an LS block here so that we can see which ones we have mounted on the system. Saves me have to leave the script and, uh, and, and go back in again, so that's kind of nice. Swap partition will give it a 2 gig, kind of a minimal amount. Uh, and then the boot, the root size will make 40 gig. Uh, and now we'll go ahead and create those partitions. It's, it's very logically uh, put together uh, in, in, in the way I would do it. I mean, I would set up my partitions and then I would go ahead and create them. So yeah, so we've formatted our partitions, got all that done, and the next would be to mount them. And that step is completed. So the next thing would be to install the base OS, and this would be the pack strap. I'm, I'll be back when this is done. This will take some time. OK. So that's done and it's taken me back to the menu. So the next step is step five, which is to configure the system settings, which, in, which would be the time zone and the locale. Now he's got, in, in, I looked in the script and he talked about it on his video and his channel as well, but the, he looks up the time zone through the, it was using the DNS uh, uh, lookup, but I'm not sure how he's doing it right now. I haven't really looked, but so locale and our time zone should be set up for us at the end of this. And the next step would be to install categories of software. So we'll go to that. And we have Xorg, general, multimedia networking fonts, and printer support. So I do want Xorg because I do want to put a GUI on this. And I will be back. This will take some time. Xorg is pretty large. OK, so Xorg is finished. Uh, the next is some general. Now, I would, if, I would customize this and put my packages in here that I like to have. But uh, yeah, um, that would be the place to do that. So I'll be back again. He's, there's a number of these two. And the next step would be, to, we've done the general, so multimedia would be next. This will also take some time. OK, so that's done. And next would be networking. I seem to have a pretty fast repo. So I, I'm kind of tempted to just let this play out. 
And of course, it stalls on the TKMS. I'll be back. Well, no, it went through it. Never mind. We'll wait. It's almost done. <clears throat> And fonts. Shouldn't be too many of those. And print cups. <laughs> uh, do I really want cups? I don't want cups. You can install it if you want it. Um, next thing is uh, to choose a desktop. And I think the one that I'm going to do for today. I'm tempted to do GNOME just to see how it compares with uh, on the size with uh, uh, with uh, Fedora. But anyway, let's try uh, Mate. I'll be back. And that is done as well. So we're done with this. I'm, I can go ahead and return. And the last step is to install Grub. So. If this is successful, hopefully, we should have a bootable system. I was going to put this on hardware today, but the the options for displaying the text are just limited. Because uh, I have to use NDI, and, and it's just so limited to do that. Anyway, that's done. <clears throat> works better <clears throat> for graphics installers than it does text. So we're done with that. <clears throat> Go ahead and reboot it. And there's my grub. And we'll go ahead and launch into, hopefully, Mate. A very, I'm sure it'll be a very green Mate. And it is. So we're connected to the wireless network. Good. That's wonderful. And I still have my Arch CD, so I can eject that and take it. I'll probably take that out of the initial thing. So the first thing I kind of want to do is change this appearance. Uh, let's see. Let's just do Arc Dark. And background image. Something dark as well. Although that's probably a little green for me. I think maybe that one would be better. Okay, so that's fine uh, for, for now. <clears throat> the other thing I want to do is change my uh, hardware settings on the display and see if I can get a little bit wider display. Let's see. That's pretty good. Let me, except this this thing is blocking. Let me retract that. Okay. So let's see. Mate terminal. And <clears throat> we'll just do a quick look around here. So <clears throat> it's taking 6.8 gig of disk. I need a few extra packages installed. He has HTOP, I'm sure, already installed, and he being Esnix, his script. NeoFetch is not, and Glances is not, so. I'm sure I'm not in sudo. I'll have to do that, so let's see. I didn't check to see if uh, Git was installed, but we'll check it. Yeah, Git's installed. Uh, just verify the kernel. Oops, uh, is 5.42 LTS, which is good. And <clears throat> let's see how let's see how bad that those packages. <laughs> uh, it's still 6.8. Uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to do a get clone on HTTPS, GitHub, 
stack.com. And we'll get Linus that get. I always like to see how well <coughs> these work. Uh, the other thing I want is Arch Audit. Arch Audit looks at the uh, CBE database and compares it to the libraries you have and looks for any vulnerabilities that are open on versions that you have installed, which is really helpful. And I wish this utility existed on others. You can do this on other distributions, but it is not as cool as the way this works. So let me just show you. It's, this is very straightforward and very easy to understand. So it's going to go out, look at my packages, and then compare them to any open CVEs, and then it provides a list package by package uh, uh, in, in the system. So there you go. Uh, there are, looks like, three highs, high risk, and one low. Yeah, the ones that are listed there are known. <laughs> those, those are usually trouble spots. I, I don't know why that is. You know, I think after this many years, you know, they would spend more time making their systems secure and keeping them secure, but they don't. Anyway, let's go see what Linus says. I mean, you're... Mm, mm, mm. I don't know if there's any new rules that they've applied uh, to this since the last time I ran it, which was a week ago. I'm sure there will be, probably tomorrow. <laughs> i probably have new rules tomorrow. <clears throat> 66 is the hardening index out of 100. And let's go see if we have any criticals. We have a couple. Uh, so yeah, it's saying that Arch Audit has output. We have some vulnerabilities that are found. We already saw those. Uh, and then IP tables. If <laughs> it's suggesting I <laughs> suggesting I, I uh, update them, yeah. yeah, I'm sure that would be a good idea. But uh, I just brought in the latest system. I doubt. Let's see. Yeah, nothing to do. So, um, anyway, uh, most of the other stuff in here is pretty common. I mean, you've seen this stuff before. It's it's here. You do, you need to get this installed. You need this. You need this. So the only thing new is because Linus knows this is Arch. It knows that I needed that, and it did. It picked it up and it started looking at it. So, um, so. I have an art system that's up and running, and now it's up to me to do whatever I wanted to do with this, uh, put on whatever compilers or whatever things that I needed it for it to do. So I, uh, I'm going to stop. I'm going to go ahead and shut this down for now. And I will come back up. So... Uh, I guess the first thing is always, you know, is this the right thing to do with Arch? So I have kind of an opinion that says it's fine. I mean, because we've been using Bash scripts to automate manual tasks for years. I mean, that's the whole purpose of the scripting language is to be able to automate repetitive tasks. Um, it does, of course, place the burden on the person that's creating that script. So Esnix is... Uh, we'll probably be having to update this as things change within the install of Arch, but um, that's life. I mean, that's 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 what happens. So, is this is this the right way to do it? It depends, right? Every, the answer is always depends. If you're trying to learn Arch the Arch way to how to install it, no, of course not. I mean, it's cheating. Uh, you should be going through the Arch wiki and going through the steps yourself. But if you're just looking to kick the tires and kind of get the feel for Arch and kind of see and maybe start learning it a little bit in internals, kind of like the way Arco Linux does, where you can bring the system up at least to some point where you feel comfortable working on it and want to start uh, playing around and learning it, running it under a VM, kicking the tires on it, 
and then maybe you decide you like it enough and you want to put it on hardware, then maybe you'll want to go back and actually do the steps yourself. I don't, I don't think there's any problem in, in automating things. I mean, if, uh, if, we, if, we, uh, if we didn't automate things in the computers, we'd still be flipping uh, zero and one switches on the front panels of the computer systems in order to program them step by step. And then, and then lose that uh, information every time we powered the machine off. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, I have no problem with automating, automation. That, that's part of what we do in computers. <laughs> it is all about automation. Having manual steps is what computers are designed to replace. That's just my opinion. If you have a different opinion, please share it in the, in the uh, comments below. But Eznix, good job. And uh, I, I wish you luck with this and, uh, and, and hope, to, hope to see many more improvements coming down the road. And bye for now.